uh, for example, as is the case, this is obviously prototypically represented in U.S. U.S. then U.S.S. U.S.S.R. Um, posturing, right? U.S.S. U.S.A. posturing, Russia postured. Our posturing thought we both were going to be aggressors. U.S.A. is going to attack Russia. Russia is going to attack U.S.A. Russians thought we were coming to kill them. We thought Russians were coming to kill us. Communists, the whole thing's going on. What's going on, right? So there's a lot of conflict. It was a lot of posturing, and in the end, what ended up happening is that there was no conflict between the United States and. And, and Russia, in part due to Reagan's genius in the stance. You've got to give him credit for his actions um, of de-escalating that conflict. It was, it was just absolutely genius on that level. There's no denying that. So both parties de-escalated, and we had a state of peace, and no one, for all practical purposes, no one died, right? So it's not that peace is, uh, that peace on that level is almost, uh, when there's that much posturing for conflict, it's almost never the case that that happens. So the fact that that happens is anomalous in itself. But you can see, there's a, if you were to look at sort of percentages, right, 25, 50, 75, 100, out of 100%, it's 25% the case. Once we get to this thing, the state, it's called a, a, a game theory for conflict escalation for a reason, right? It's 25% it's case. There's a 25% likelihood of attaining peace in this sense. It's more likely, 75% chance, right? There's a 75% chance. There's going to be significant casualties, and and there's a 25% chance, right? There's a 25% chance that it's going to result in, in in actually no conflict, right? Which which is what made the the Cold War, which was what made the Cold War amazing, right? You can, people should never stop writing about that conflict. That was just you can research that until the cows come home. Um, yeah, there's a 25% chance. It's you know. They're going to die, right? Maximum number of deaths. Oh, sorry. Maximum number of deaths for both of us. Maximum numbers of deaths for um, the opponent. Maximum number of deaths for the home team. I mean, any of, any of these results are going to lead to casualties, significant, significant casualties, right? Um, the whole point is to try and strategize what is acceptable and what is not. We don't want our people to die. We know our people are going to die, and so on. It's not, it's not even this is not an easy, um, you know, I, this job is... <laughs> in the real world, in the real world, it's a tough, it's a tough thing to do, right? It's a really tough thing to do because you're talking about humans' lives for real. Um, next point: um, in non-cooperation, exclusive disjunction, we recognize that it's either or, right? In our decision-making process, I'm either going to escalate or de-escalate. I can't do both. I can't both escalate and de-escalate. I have to make, I have to make a concerted decision to choose. Attaining peace requires de-escalation, right? Now we have to think about this, right? In non-cooperative action, attaining this peace requires us to de-escalate. There's no E here, right? So the only way that we get to R is through de-escalating the conflict. If we don't de-escalate the conflict, we can never attain the state of affairs. Right? So that's the first point. However, um, but not knowing the enemy's decision, I don't know what the enemy's going to do, right? Not knowing the enemy's decision, de-escalation leads to the worst possible outcome, right? I don't know what the enemy's going to do. So if I choose to de-escalate, we recognize that de-escalation is a path to the worst possible outcome, which is being a sucker, right? The worst possible outcome is that you de-escalate the conflict and they escalate the conflict. You're like, I don't want to fight, I don't want to fight, and they hit you when you're posturing for defense, when you're posturing for, for peace. You get hit, you don't expect it, you didn't think that they're going to attack. You're a sucker. That's the worst possible option, right? You're just, wow, I, how, did, how, did we get, how did we get to that state of affairs, right? Um, so what we recognize is it's not simple to get to a state of peace, because though both of us de-escalating leads to this, my de-escalation, not knowing the decision that my opponent's going to make, can either lead to a state of peace or, conversely, the worst possible move in this game, right? A state where I'm the sucker, I'm getting hit and I wasn't ready for it. So that complicates the game significantly. Um, escalating, however, leads to the worst overall possible outcome. Um, escalating this conflict will lead to both of us being um, being uh, punished, right? Maximum number of deaths um, and the greatest number of casualties, right? These casualties are going to be significant, right? So what we recognize is that it's not it's not that simple. Now, granted, those of you who don't who do know Prisoner's Dilemma, I haven't quite yet, and I'm not saying that this is um, sort of the, the the hierarchy of disadvantages map onto the Prisoner's Dilemma. You can easily substitute, get rid of PSTR and put 1234 
but I, I think that the prisoner's dilemma maps onto this sort of significantly, and it would just be good to have new discourse on new ways of theorizing war games um, and war game strategy. The last thing, war game strategies and uh, assessments. As I said before, we begin with what we know that we know. We know that we know that they got bombs. We infer from the un, um, the known, I, put, I have to change that, from the known unknown, we infer from the known unknown um, all the possibilities in the game, right? We know that we do not know how many bombs they have. We know that they have some. And now because we don't know what how many bombs that they have, that's going to make us, that's going to force us to make a decision, right? Do we act, do we not? How, for, how much do we engage or not? And so on, right? Um, you weigh your outcomes and list them in order of preference, right? We list our outcomes in order of preference. So what I might say in this particular game, just as an example, I might say that this is the worst possible state of affairs. I don't want that as, a, as an option, right? And I think that this is probably unattainable. I think it's probably unattainable for this particular conflict. So that leaves me with these options, right? So what ends up happening is we both escalate and we increase the conflict, or um, I escalate enough. I posture for threatening and hope to hope to. And this, to be honest with you, um, I don't know. Well, I mean, it's a lecture, so I, I don't know. But you know, now that I think about this, this is I hope what they're doing, right? What you do is you 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 posture for escalation of conflict and hope that your posturing is is effective enough to de-escalate, right? So you give into temptation. And actually, I would I would hope that what we're doing right now is this path, right? I think this is the best path for our actions in Libya currently, right? Um, we need to escalate in order to get a de-escalation because this is not going to be attainable. That's not going to that's not going to be attainable. It's really unrealistic. So everybody's like, oh, Obama and the administration, you know, what are they doing, blah, blah, blah. Really, I think what they're doing is they've recognized using a game a theoretic game tree construction that this is probably the best, this is the best position, right? Escalate the conflict so that the conflict is overall de-escalated on their part. We give into temptation and the conflict subsides, right? It doesn't necessarily mean that maximum number of casualties have to be a high number of casualties. It's not like we're going in there to kill people, but we're escalating the conflict and whatever potential risk is involved, um, is they be, they bear the onus of that uh, of that risk, right? Okay, so personally speaking, I think that's what we should be doing. I don't know if that's the right thing to say or the wrong thing to say, but I think that's the path that we're taking right now or should be taking. Um, utilize those moves that lead to the best and the most practical goals. Obviously, this is the best goal. It's probably the most unrealistic goal. I would say this is the most practical goal, so that's the posturing that I would do. I would construction the game with respect to Libya. Other games, I might go a different path, but with respect to Libya, I would structure the game in, in, in the manner of getting us to this point. Right? I think that's the best possible um, move in that game. And then lastly, recognize that the tree is atemporal, so moves can be executed simultaneously. Right? Recognize that um, we don't know what might be done on the adversary's part, whoever our adversary might be, um, and you have to um, play the game in a full recognition that we don't know what that is, right? We only know what we know. <laughs> Alright, um, I hope that was clear. Um, it applies to conflicts that we're currently engaged in, so I think it's meaningful. Um, don't really have much else to say. Hopefully this background information will help facilitate the next discussion. With that being said, I want to thank you for taking the time to watch my videos. I'm Dr. Jason J. Campbell. Thank you and have a good day.